water? I think so. Oh yeah, that's water. <laughs> None for me, thanks. Like a Dutch cap. Yeah, it's so anyway. Open it there. Well, good morning. <laughs> hey there. Hey, hey, what's uh, happening? We'll start off. Uh, want to introduce you guys, introduce yourselves, let everybody know who you are. Sure. Well, you... I am Heath Seifert, mm -hmm. writer. Kevin Coppolo, uh, his partner. I'm writer. Writer. Give him the big picture. Writing partner. Yeah, yeah. And I'm Phil Trailer, director. Uh, so I mean, it's, we're we're here. I mean, you guys are bringing back so many people's childhoods uh, that didn't think this was ever going to happen. Uh, <laughs> I guess first question is, what what brought this back? Like, what was it like a a Kickstarter somewhere that I didn't know about? Like, <laughs> yeah. what what brought you guys to the table to get this get this going? You know, honestly, I think we've always had Good Burger, you know, at the front of our minds, and we've always been coming up with sketches and bits, even in all the years in between where we weren't doing stuff, we always had ideas, uh, to the point that we were actually having a meeting about something else, um, and Good Burger came up, and we're like, oh, well, we actually have an idea for the next movie, and they're like, let's hear it, and, and so we kind of pitched it so out, and... Yeah. It also helps that the director of the original Good Burger movie is now president of Paramount. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brian Robbins, he's amazing. So, so we had a meet, we were having a meeting. But he wasn't when we, when we yeah. sold the idea. Don't, yeah. Exactly. He, sure, he, he, would have, he loves it as a fan of his own work as well as... In the well, he's very but, protective of it. But, he, yeah, yeah, he cares very and he's very passionate about it. But yeah, so we, and then we, we did the All That reboot um, a few years back as well. And one of the things we wanted to do with that was, you know, Bring back some sketches from the original, and Good Burger was sort of a no-brainer. Um, yeah, like and then that. when, when <laughs> Kel put on the uh, Good Burger outfit again and came out, it was like it was literally like yeah, we were on the set in the nineties. <laughs> we were like, just like the original. We should, we could make a movie, you know, we really could. And then I think it got other people's attention, and it just that's kind of what spurred it on again. It got people excited about it again, and I think it, that maybe uh, was a little bit of a catalyst for Keenan and Kel talking about it again, and. and you know, feeling like, you know what, I think it's time. I think it's... There's and definitely an appetite for it, though, because when we were filming, there was the streets outside the Good Burger restaurant were packed with people coming and screaming, and, and then Keenan and, and Kel would cakes. go, ruining cakes, <laughs> and then Keenan and Kel would go, and go guys, guys, please be quiet for those 30 seconds we're doing, just a, a scene, and everyone was completely silent, and then, and then they'd scream again when they were told that they were allowed to scream again. So you felt this massive fan base, but also really people wanting it to work, you know, really being helpful. I was, I was very interested, uh, kind of like what he was asking before, um, it seems like since now is the right time for, like you said, Good Burger's kind of always been in people's minds, especially mm -hmm. since the first show, first movie, and then um, when Keenan and Kel reunited on The Snake Show to do that sketch, and then yeah. when yeah. the reboot of all that came out, it seems like, uh, you know, the, the demand was always there. When did, did the idea come to you? Because it seems like the fans have kind of always been asking for Keenan and Kel well, to reunite. Well, we've always while. wanted to do this. I mean, we should be on the Good Burger 9 right now, but <laughs> but we've always wanted to, and we're always wondering why they weren't doing it. I mean, frankly, but we had, we also knew we needed an idea that moved up with the times, and so we did come up with the idea about seven or eight years ago. <laughs> and, uh, we were it's a process. It's There's a process, a process to, to getting a film yeah. made, but and, and you have to get everybody on board too. You know, you want everybody excited about it, not just not just Ethan and I. But it, so. it has been 25 years of people saying, "When are you doing a sequel? When are you doing a sequel?" <laughs> have you, you know, just putting to your previous point, getting everyone on board. Obviously, Kid and Kel, they're the essential ones. But the fact mm -hmm. you get other actors like Josh Server coming back, um, yeah, obviously, for various reasons, the other sub actors couldn't reprise it after like Ape Pagoda. <laughs> obviously, yeah, unfortunately, sadly. sadly. No, sadly. Um, but obviously, I um, don't know if you can say other actor. Well, I guess um, I'm a big Linda Cardellini fan. Mm, um, as are we. As, as are we. we. I, for the longest time, I didn't realize that was her as Heather in the first yeah. one. And um, obviously, I don't, obviously, I don't know if you could say if she, any chance of her coming back, or were there any characters, actors you wanted to get back, or just couldn't make it work for whatever reason. She's not coming back, Linda, no, but, but there's lots of other people who are. Lori Beth. Yes, I'm yeah, very Laurie excited Beth. for the return of Connie Muldoon. Connie, Connie Muldoon is in <laughs> yes. the whole thing. Uh, that, was, that was an original crossover from all that and two, you know, so that kind of 
There, I, there are a lot of uh, incredible celebrity cameos. Carmen, Carmen Electra coming back. Rocks. <laughs> yeah, it's coming back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and there are a lot. You know, we, when we sat down to write this, we watched the first film again several times, and, yeah. and we thought about like, well, what can we, what can we bring back? What makes sense? Or what, what's a fun bit that maybe creates an exciting, surprising cameo? Uh, and there are a lot in the film. There's a lot of there's tons more sort of new cameos as well of people who had they only known that how big the Good Burger One was going to be, they, those people back then would have just put mm -hmm. their hands up. How can I get in it? Now, of course, we had so many incoming calls saying, "Please can be part of it. Please can be part of it." <laughs> so it's kind of packed with surprise cameos. And, and when we wrote it, we were kind of like, "Whoa, I hope Lori Beth will do this." Like we, you know, we wrote it, without, <laughs> you know, and then we, we kept in touch with her over the years, and and she really did seem very game for because we worked with her too as well. Um, you know, when all that reboots, we thought, wow, she'll she'll do this. You know, come on, she'll do it. No, and we've remained friends with her over the years. So, you don't burn your bridges, right? <laughs> so, can you tell us if she's on good terms with the big cup of corn? <laughs> with what? With the big cup oh, of the, corn? Oh, the big ear of corn. Yeah, they had a nice reunion on yes, the reboot, they, but that yes. was a few years ago. Are uh -huh. they still on good terms? I, you might have to ask her that, but I assume yes. <laughs> uh, I, I know that we had to rebuild the ear of corn because the original one went missing. Um, no. And then I think yeah. the new one went missing after we shot some stuff. So I don't know. Maybe I don't know she has it at her house. That, I don't because know. it was enormous. Somebody has to plan that. Uh, that's I, a I big don't know how you get out. Yeah. I, um, I, I think before I sat down and talked to you guys, I was more surprised at the level of marketing that was put in. But then you just explained why there's so much market. Like, you know, because this felt like a when it was announced, almost like a directed DVD sequel thing. Because I was like, why is this not getting a theatrical release? You know, as, as yeah. big as this is. So, well, I guess kind of, I guess the answer would be money, but like, what was the answer to not do? To not like, do it as a theatrical release? Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, honestly, I think films are coming out straight on streaming now. Right. So I think they're treating it, it's a film, but that just happens to be on Paramount Plus, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean like coming, coming from San Diego, I mean, just plastered everywhere, Good Burger, you know what I mean? Like, you know, versus like this just being like, oh, it's, this is going to be on Paramount Plus and it's get a little, little spot or something like that. But you guys are definitely going it all out. I think you're, this. I think it would be amazing to be in theaters, but mm -hmm. um, as we're not, the um, uh, p people who've seen, the, seen it in focus groups and stuff like that yeah. have been saying what an amazing sleepover movie this would be. Mm. And so <laughs> um, I think the, the group mentality of watching it will be really fun for people to get together and watch it in groups, whether it's family groups or just bunches of kids getting together to watch it or bunches of older people. Um, but that community feel, because it's such a, well, so it, it generates such good feeling in the audience that, um, that you probably will get people, people watching watch together. It multiple yeah, I think times. it's gonna be great like that. Yeah. That brings up a sorry. Yeah. Uh, that brings up a good point because since the original came out in the '90s, obviously a lot of fans of the original people that were I was only three when it came out, but I still <laughs> loved it since like since I was like five. Nah. So I've been watching it what seems like 25 years at this point. Um, so how did you kind of bridge the gap between obviously the fans that are going to come back and that love these characters versus the new fans like the younger generation? I have like a five-year-old cousin and he discovered yeah. Good Burger on Netflix a few years ago. It's the yeah. same, just the way you liked it when you were. If, uh, the new kids will like it, and then the then there's plenty for the adults, that, you know, that watch the original. Yeah, I mean, we wanted yeah. to tell a story that was a big, fun, hilarious adventure. If you haven't seen the first film, you're gonna love it, and we'll have a whole new generation of fans waiting for the third one. <laughs> uh, and and if we wanted to make sure we did right by fans of the original too, because we know there's a huge nostalgia for this film, and and we're very protective of Ed and and the Good Burger franchise, and so for us. You know, we know the voice. We're not going to do anything crazy with it, but you know, there, I think there's a lot in there to reward fans of the original. But there's a scene, for example, there's a scene on the rooftop at night. So if you're watching the original, you don't know. If you're watching the the, the new movie and you don't, you've never seen the first one. It's just a really lovely scene of two guys sitting on deck chairs on a roof at night. And if you've seen the original, you're like, oh, that yeah. was like in the original. They did a movie. They did the, the same. Look at the sets, the same. It's so cool. So people that it's for both. It's it, it, it satisfies both audiences, right? Yeah. People that haven't seen the original uh, aren't going to be really confused when they see it. No. Yeah. They'll, they'll follow. It. <laughs> I, 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 I definitely need a recap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, um, not a science. Um, I remember I was such a fan. I actually read the novelization of oh, the kid, wow. oh, yeah. and I just remember there were scenes. I assume, looks like they was they were cut uh, that weren't mm -hmm. in the make it. I think there was like a horse, a drive-through scene, and like um, 
a whole bunch of like stuff that you know, um, and even Linda, she was at the end. She escaped from the mental asylum. Yes, she was in there. Okay. And yes. um, I'm just, you know, I suddenly saw that. Oh, she's in the background. So I'm curious for the, <laughs> this. Was there anything? Did you pretty much film it exactly, or was there anything that got cut or that didn't make the final oh, version? Ooh, wow. I. That's a good question. We filmed everything and everything made it. And then right at the last minute, we cut a few oh. little scenes of the baddies. Yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. There's a, 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 the only thing that found the cutting room floor is a, a few little scenes of the baddies being super bad <laughs> um, because we decided to stay with the Keenan and Kel and, and experience adventure on their own. But, yeah, there yeah. are. I, I'm I'm curious what outtakes exist from the original movie because that would be mm. fun to see. Yeah, yeah. it kind of seems like Wayne's World. Like when they filmed <laughs> Wayne's World, they were kind of they were filming it so quickly that they were like, if you could get a joke in and improvise it and keep it like under five seconds, we'll try to keep it in the movie. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it moves really yeah. fast. I mean, the the film moves super fast, so there's jokes coming at you the whole time. So I'm sure there's <laughs> little jokes that didn't make it here and there because it just the pace of it's so crazy. Well, guys, we appreciate you for doing this with us. We yeah. really appreciate your time. Hope to see you at this panel. Spit, you know, spill some secrets, maybe get a little trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, hope, I hope go. But uh, thank you again for doing this interview with us, guys. Thank you yeah, so much. Thank you guys. Happy to do it. Do you guys have ideas for good birthday?